bonding assay question 2. So bonding assay question 2 to tell us we have two elements x and y, electronic configuration or electronic structure 287 and 286. So to tell us write the electronic configuration for the isotope of atom y. A lot of the people here, when you look at the word isotope, you are slightly frightened. You're thinking, oh no, what do I have to do? In actual fact, remember, when they say isotope, it means same number of proton, a different number of neutron. So do you really need to care about so much about whether the term isotope is there? The answer is no. Hence, in actual fact, all you need to do is just copy down this answer here, 286. So you can see in the answer, 286. Next up, for 2b, they're saying that x and y combine together to form a compound z with a melting point of negative 106, negative 99. This 2 is low melting point and boiling point. Okay, so state with the reason, physical state for compound at room conditions. Okay, now in room condition, you must take note that it is 25 degrees Celsius. So 25 degrees Celsius is above the boiling point of Z, because the boiling point is negative 99. So hence, Z will be a guess. Okay, Z will be a guess. So for 2C here, they tell us, draw the dot and cross diagram for the compound Z. Draw the dot and cross diagram. First up, identify. You know that X and Y is really a covalent compound. So that's the first up. You know that you will need to draw a square bracket, you will need to draw ionic bond. Okay, secondly, if to draw covalent compounds, you need to find out what is the chemical formula. So, looking at the elements here, I know that X and Y, X is in group 7, so special number 1. Y is in group 6, so special number 2. So if you do your crisscross, what you're going to have is a Y, X, 2. So, with that in mind, you can draw the structure chemical formula from the structural formula and then leading up to your dot and cross diagram. So with the special number, you know how many bonds they have. So X, special number 1, so 1 bond each. Y, special number 2, so 2 bonds for each Y. In this case here, you have 1 Y, so 2 bonds here. And from here, you can draw your dot and cross diagrams. Okay, take note that um, how do I go about doing this in actual fact? You know that Y, it has six electrons in the valence shell. Okay, you know that this is in group six. So group six, special number two. X, okay, it has seven valence electrons. So group seven, special number one. So you can see here Y, after you have drawn the two bonds, how many electrons remaining? So 6 minus 2, what you're going to get is 4. So I'm going to fill up 4 more electrons for Y. And for X, I have 7 electrons. Okay, sorry, I'm, it is in group 7, minus a special number. What you're going to have is 6 electrons remaining. So for X, I'll draw 6 more electrons each. And this is my dot and cross diagram for question 2C. For question 2D, part 1. We talk about the boiling point. So first up, they ask you why does the boiling point differ from magnesium chloride? So first up, you must say the difference is actually because Z is a covalent compound, whereas, whereas magnesium chloride is an ionic compound. So why Z is so special is because little energy is needed to overcome the weak intermolecular bonds for compound Z. Okay, so magnesium is ionic, Whereas Z is covalent. So what's so special about covalent? How come it has low melting point? Is because we talk about little energy needed to overcome the force of attraction. In this case for Z, it will be a weak intermolecular bond. How about part two? As we know, Z is already a covalent compound. So we definitely know that Z cannot conduct electricity in molten and equal state. But what's the reason? is because it does not have any mobile charge carriers. Okay, we talk about mobile charge carriers referring to ions or electrons. Okay, now, compound Z is they're asking you to give another property of compound Z. Now, in this case here, 
we need to find out what's another property of a covalent compound. So how do we find out? In actual fact, you learn three different physical properties, or should I say three different properties of a covalent compound. First up, we talk about the conduction of electricity, or even electrical conductivity of covalent compounds. We talk about the melting and boiling point of your co covalent compounds. And lastly, we talk about solubility in water. So actually, compounds that is insoluble in water. There's another term which I wrote here. I talk about it being soluble in organic solvent. This thing here, I guess, um, is not necessary for you to know yet because you haven't learned what is organic compounds. However, it's a good to know that if it is insoluble in water, if any compound is insoluble in water, most probably it is soluble in organic solvent. But if it is soluble in water, most probably it will be insoluble in organic solvent. So just take note of this as I did not include it in your lessons.